Hi, I'm Helen. And I'm Jess. And welcome to another episode of Dose of Pharma. Today, we're joined by Belinda, who is a director at Institute of Personal Care Science and has been a previous guest on our podcast. And we will discuss synthetic versus natural cosmetics. To begin with, Belinda, would you be able to tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm a cosmetic chemist. Um, I've run the Institute for 15 years. We deliver online training around the world in over 100 different countries. Um, we're also internationally and industry recognised, uh, focusing on cosmetic formulation. We also teach regulatory affairs and also cosmetic brand management. So to start off with, people in general have become increasingly focused on the details of their skincare. And how has like the choice of synthetic versus natural cosmetics, how is that framed to consumers? It's usually framed to consumers as natural being safer. Um, that's not necessarily correct. Uh, I just want to make sure your viewers are aware of that. But consumers resonate with that message very easily. You don't need to convince a consumer that natural is good for them. And a lot of that probably comes from influence of, you know, foods. Obviously, more natural foods is better than processed. Unfortunately, that sort of... Um, perception is carried over to the personal care industry because it's not necessarily true uh, and even when you have natural ingredients in products there's still some really important synthetic ingredients that have some fantastic functions in a product that just can't be replicated by natural ingredients so it does make the role of a cosmetic chemist a lot harder but at the same time it's a very competitive industry so companies are always looking for new ways to market their products as as unique or better or safer uh, again this is not necessarily done correctly but this is how consumers um, often believe natural products to be more safe. Yeah, that's something I've definitely noticed when buying products is that push of natural and like a lot of products that almost look like food and like seem very natural. Like I have something for my hair and one of my friends was like, why do you have yogurt in your bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's just that push to be like as yeah, natural as possible and that seems as better, whereas the yeah, general public doesn't realise that there is a need for these synthetic ingredients. In saying this, um, what are some of the merits of using natural ingredients in personal care formulations? There's been a lot of research by raw material suppliers into offering natural ingredients. In particular, there's a lot of um, natural extracts that have been standardised or concentrated in certain ways with a lot of efficacy data to support um, the research and their performance. So in those cases, natural ingredients, you know, are really good for your skin or your hair, particularly where there is efficacy data to, to support their use and prove it. Uh, and a lot of companies are investing in those sorts of actives because they know consumers want natural. They also know that consumers tend to look at the, the marketing claims. There's definitely consumers that will look at every single ingredient in an ingredient list. There are also the very hard ones to please because, you know, there's something wrong with everything, even water. Um, but at the same time, in the marketing campaigns, the marketers will really highlight the, the, the natural extracts or the actives. And again, if there's performance data to prove those actives, it's a really easy marketing story to sell to a consumer because they're interested in the natural actives thinking they're better for them. So there are definitely a lot of natural ingredients that um, perform exceptionally well, um, even better than some synthetic offerings. But at the same time, there's a lot of synthetic ingredients that outperform natural ingredients, particularly for functional materials, um, the ones that really hold the formula together or deliver certain performance aspects, especially hair products. Uh, it's very, very difficult to uh, match the performance of a, a synthetic or even partially natural, partially synthetic hair product. You, you just can't recreate the same performance using all natural ingredients. Um, so there's a downside there with some of the functionality, but definitely there's a lot of natural actives that can be marketed well and have great data behind their use. Yeah, I strongly agree with that. Like a lot of the times on the products, 
they might have both natural and synthetic compounds, but they tend to highlight the yes. natural ones more than the synthetic one. Um, and so, as you said, um, a lot of consumers, they're not really aware of those advantages of the synthetic compounds that are used in the formulations. So um, what do you think are the, some of the upcoming synthetic active ingredients that consumers might like and they should be aware of the advantages of those com um, synthetic compounds? Um, the one that I'm really thinking about there is peptides. Um, peptides are produced synthetically and if you can get a peptide to its delivery site, um, which is a deeper layers of the epidermis, then it will always work. Um, getting it there is the problem because it, again, a lot of consumers think that everything you put on your skin just gets straight through to your blood. That's totally incorrect as well. Um, one of the jobs of a cosmetic chemist is actually to ensure delivery of the substances that we want to the level of the epidermis where we will get the desired result. For example, when you apply plant oils or, or synthetic oils, um, it, they really just sit at the surface of the skin. And that's where you want them because then it protects against transepidermal water loss um, and it provides a conditioning and moisturizing benefit for the skin so you don't need them to go any deeper with something like a peptide though you do need it to get to the deeper layers of the epidermis and you are comparatively talking about something the size of a pinhead crossing the length of a football field so it's really hard to get good delivery of these tiny substances but again them being synthetic there's a lot of research behind them you know they're very biomimetic um, with the body systems and they definitely get the desired results. Um, and there's something that just haven't been able to be mimicked or, or copied by a natural substance to get the same sort of results. They're trying uh, and they'll probably get there, but definitely the synthetic peptides. Um, I'm always a big fan of peptides. And I suppose there's only so much progress you could make on a natural product or a natural compound before it's no longer natural and it is now a synthetic compound. So <laughs> there definitely is a need, yeah, for those synthetic compounds to keep progressing cosmetics. And the peptides down very exciting and very useful in mm. future formulations. And as I mentioned too, um, there's a lot of uh, hair functional ingredients, your, your foaming products, um, your conditioning ingredients in particular, um, even those materials used to stabilize water and oil emulsions, you just can't get the same performance without a little bit of synthetic present. Um, it, you know, they try, uh, suppliers definitely come out with materials that are all natural and supposed to do the job. But honestly, when you try them in a formula, they just don't deliver on their promises. And at the end of the day, a consumer might be attracted to an all natural story, but they're really going to purchase a product that does what they want it to do and if they want nice soft conditioned hair they'll pick the synthetic material every time are there any synthetic materials that are as bad as these companies make them out to be they're not permitted there's all sorts of regulations to ensure the safety of consumers so it's like anything you know if you use too much of lemon essential oil and go out in the sun it's going to stain your skin irreversibly that's completely natural um same thing with all of your synthetic ingredients. There's regulations and limits put in place to help ensure safety of consumers. What really makes my blood boil is when I see products claiming that they're free from certain ingredients that would just never be used in that type of formula anyway, or aren't permitted in cosmetics, full stop. There's actually really strict EU guidelines and rules that, that apply in Europe where you can't even make free from claims anymore because of the misinformation that was being provided to consumers um, as scare tactics. Um, and while that legislation hasn't passed here in Australia, you know, it's definitely something we should be modeling our marketing by. And it never makes sense to market on what a product doesn't have. You should be always marketing what a product can do and, and has in it rather than talking about what it doesn't. Unfortunately, there's a lot of companies out there that think if they don't scare people away from certain ingredients they just won't get a market share but hopefully we'll see that change there's definitely a lot of products out there at the moment that just have a really long list about all the things they don't have in them that's almost as long as like what they do have in them mm, and, and some of those ingredients just wouldn't even occur in that type of product and that's really annoying when i see that and the other thing is 
why what's what's wrong with these ingredients you know um something like sodium lauryl sulfate gets picked on all the time but when you're using a very you only need a tiny amount of it to get a great foam and a great clean and then you combine it with other ingredients that you know enhance the performance and improve the mildness so why avoid it when it's really cheap you can then put all the money into fantastic actives that really provide a fantastic performance unfortunately consumers are so brainwashed that they think it's bad for them that it's really difficult for a company to market the benefits of a product if they have SLS on their label. That's just one example. You know, there's a lot of other examples like that, unfortunately. Yeah, I agree. Because like, I'm also using the shampoo that that's marketed like, um, no, like they have like a whole list, list of ingredients that they don't include in that product. And that includes EDTA. And then I was so confused because I, I thought EDTA is an ingredient that should be included because like it binds to um, so many like metals and then it helps the compound, uh, like it helps the product to be stored for a longer period of time. So then when you claim that you don't have EDTA, then I'm also like a bit concerned about like how long that product can last. Mm. They might be using some surfactants that, that don't form scum in hard water areas. Um, they might also be using a different chelating agent. Um, but again, what's wrong with a little bit of EDTA, EDTA? You use such a small amount if you do need it. Again, it's this is a discussion that could just go on and on. It, it doesn't make sense. But again, consumers just see no EDTA and they're like, oh, well, that must be bad for me, you know, and it's just not correct. But it's something that you've got to be aware of. If you're formulating a product for a company, you've got to be aware of what that consumer is thinking. Otherwise, you're not going to be giving them a product that they're comfortable with and they'll just go and pick something else. So it's a big problem. Another thing that's becoming more and more popular is personalised skincare routines. Is there anything consumers should take into consideration when deciding between synthetic and natural formulations in their personalised skincare? I think it's really going to come down to the individual consumer. And I really do think that sometimes consumers need to purchase their ideal natural product um, and then see how see if they're happy with it because they'll ultimately their, their repurchasing decision will come down to if they're happy with the product otherwise they'll go and look for something else now if you can create a great natural product that really does deliver on its promises and is the price that your consumer is willing to pay well then you've you've probably got a really winning product because it's going to tick all those consumer boxes but generally a lot of your natural ingredients cost more um, you might need more than one type of ingredient to perform the same sort of function that one synthetic ingredient could have done. So again, that adds to cost of the product. Definitely formulating, you know, all natural or avoiding certain types of ingredients and replacing them with more natural alternatives um, takes more R&D time, which obviously costs more in development. Then you need to check the stability. So there's a lot of things that will impact the product and definitely that has an influence on the price. So really you can't convince a consumer if they've got a certain mindset, they're better off trying a product and then realizing that, hey, why aren't I using the best of both worlds? Why aren't I looking for a product that's got some great natural actives, but some great synthetic materials so that I get good functionality, performance and shelf life out of my product. Um, as a chemist, when I'm looking at products, I'm really looking at what's it going to do for me? What ingredients are going to do that for me? And honestly, when I'm formulating, you know, the best types of products are those that use the best of both worlds. We shouldn't be discluding things just because of some, you know, whim or fad or bad claims out there, scare tactics. Um, we really should be looking at the functionality of the product. And ultimately, too, consumers are going to um, vote with their wallets. So even if you had the best product in the world, if it's too expensive for your consumer, it doesn't matter what you say about it, they're not going to buy it. Uh, and if it doesn't perform, they're definitely not going to repeat purchase. Yeah, I think that's some great advice to get the best of both worlds and that functionality is the priority when searching for your cosmetics. Mm. So I think, yeah, that's some great advice to leave our listeners with. And thank you so much for joining us today, Belinda. My pleasure. Yeah, I'm sure that everyone can take away something from today.
and that hopefully it's cleared up some myths for a lot of our viewers. Thank you. Thank you. So, so Farmer acknowledges the traditional custodians of the various lands throughout Australia on which we connect today and pays respect to elders past, present and future.